Well, I've been talking to Dina quite a bit lately and then also seeing uh, posts on Instagram about Neil Sean and Jonathan Kane having a feud or whatever, and people saying you'd be nowhere without C. Perry. And I'll tell you, this is not Neil Sean's first rodeo by any means. Neil Sean told me when I was on tour with Hardline, I, my mother, Buko, and myself, we're on the, the Hardline Tour following them in 92. And uh, I mentioned, did you play Woodstock? And Neil said, Neil Sean said, no. I joined Santana a couple of months after that. He was 16 years old when he joined the band, Santana. If you don't know the history of Neil Sean, he came from Santana and then an offshoot became Journey with Ainsley Dunbar and Ross, no, uh, Greg Raleigh and Neil Sean. And uh, I think Ross Valerie was playing bass, Steve Miller's bass player. Man, I learned the best blues riffs from the Rock Love album by Steve Miller, and they're on tour with Journey now. Neil is a great guitar player. He's not a braggart. He's not a loudmouth. He just plays, and he plays. That's why Steve Perry was such a good singer. It's all because of Neil Sean's inspiring melodic riffs. He sings with a guitar. He's like a seeing eye dog for singers who can follow him and be inspired by his melodies on guitar. And, uh, He's the first guy I ever saw that had a Floyd Rose on a Les Paul. But hanging out with him for the week that we were on tour with him, he's such a great guy. I'm so glad Dean is in the band with him. I, my, when I met Dean Casanova, the drummer, I said, this guy is destined to be one of the greatest ever. And, and I will do everything in my power, even if it meant just compromising my career. I don't care. I'm all, I've am i always said, let the better person be the guy. And if I can help that, I'm helping the world of music. So when I did the Dr. Mastermind album, Mike Barney asked me, can you get Dean to play drums? I go, yeah, I could. I go, can you get Dean some studio work? And I'm thinking... He played with a bunch of guys on Shrapnel Records, like Marty Friedman. And so that happened. He said, well, if you have to move down here, I go, put some money in my budget, and we can move him down there and make sure he gets paid enough to live down there. And he played with Tony McAlpine, practicing across, rehearsing <laughs> across the hall from Bad English with Neil Sean. And we were managed by, the Wild Dogs was managed by Ken Mendick, who was Journey's light director. And when he got a hold of me, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure he had his eye on Dean. So, Neil says, join Bad English. And so he did. And bingo. Took off like a rocket. And uh, hasn't stopped since. It's, it's cost Dean... You know, everything has its price, but it's worth it in the end. And I think I'm so proud to say Dean plays with the biggest band in the world. There is no other group that has so many hits for so many years in so many places. And Neil Sean's guitar is... The reason those songs really reach people, that guitar really sings to you. And I, every on Instagram, if you are on Instagram, he's always playing, like Ingbe. But and he's Fred's, but he doesn't make a big deal out of it. It's just what he does. When uh, uh, Har Hardline played with Mr. Big on tour, and they played the Marin Center, and my mom and I and Book were there by the tour bus, and Neil Sean's parents were there, 
and my mom was talking to Neil's parents, and all of a sudden, and Todd Jensen, he worked with Todd's mom at Textronics. This Ferrari goes, Vroom, and drives right up on the lawn next to him. He gets out, it's Sammy Hagar. My mom turned to me, says, is that Sammy Hagar? I go, yeah. She was just beside herself. So, Neil, keep going. You're great. Dean, I'm proud of you, and thank you for contacting me. I need you in this time, and I appreciate you so much. I love you, brother. And may you rock the place everywhere you go. And these places are big.